Hey guys, welcome back to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we are back here with our Jinx updated complete guide for of course, you know, the latest patch onwards after, you know, having, you know, all the Shield Bowl, Phantom Dancer updates and stuff. We haven't covered Jinx yet and, you know, it's been some time since, like, you know, those items came out. And we've gone through, you know, a couple of patches already as well. But, you know, we're slowly working our way through, you know, the ADC roster. We still have a lot of other champions we've yet to take a look at, you know, of course, including other champions like... You know, even the Ezreal's, Lucian's, Senna's, Twitch's, etc's of the world, which we all we will be, of course, covering, you know, in the upcoming days and weeks. But we're gonna jump into Jinx today, and honestly, I think Jinx's build is pretty contentious. I did try many different Jinx builds, and this is the one that I like personally. I did try going for like a uh, Shield Bow first item. I didn't really like a uh, Shield Bow first item. I went for Shield Bow later on. I didn't really like Shield Bow later on as well because I felt that if you're going for Shield Bow as a last item, why not just go for Bloodthirster instead? Like, gives you more value than Shield Bow most of the time because having more healing constantly, in my opinion, is, uh, you know, most of the time superior to having a shield. Except when there's like an assassin that can one shot you, like a, a Rengar or a Kha'Zix, for example, then a shield becomes better. Uh, but we'll, of course, talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, I've tested, you know, uh, like going for rapid fire cannon and etc. And I didn't. I, I liked rapid fire cannon actually, but I preferred this build. So, what is this build that I'm talking about? Well, uh, it's basically exactly what you see here. So, I'm gonna explain it a little bit. The first thing is, I actually like going for BF sword as a first item. Why? Because if you notice, BF sword gives you 40 AD, and 40 AD is, you know, it's a lot of AD for 100 and uh, 1,500 gold. To, to, to put that into perspective, 1.5k gold BF sword gives you as much AD as a shield bow, uh, gives you as much AD as a essence reaver, and gives you as much AD as a storm razor. So this like 1.5k gold is gives you as much AD as a full item. So in my opinion, going for BF sword first item makes the most sense because it's the most like gold efficient item. Uh, you know, out of all, all out of all of these. However, the, the main issue with this is going for a storm, uh, going for BF Sword as your first item is going to delay the rest of your build. So you're not going to get uh, Phantom Dancer before the first dragon, which some people ha uh, take issue with. Personally, I think I'd rather have like a, a BF Sword together with like, for example, a uh, Zeal and a Long Sword as my item components going into the dragon fight than just have a, a Storm Razor personally, because I think the AD from BF Sword is really important. So I go for BF Sword into Phantom Dancer. Phantom Dancer, of course, gives you the movement speed and the attack speed that is really important for Jinx. Also gives you a little bit of AD and of course crit. Then of course your BF sword is gonna build into your IE. And most of the time for boots I like to take uh, Gluttonous Greaves for the healing or sometimes defensive boots if I really need it. And Stasis is what I go for most of the time. And then I like to go for Runan's Hurricane as a third item. So if you notice, because we have attack speed on Phantom Dancer, and I'm going for another attack speed item uh, on Runan's Hurricane, um, I don't actually take Lethal Tempo anymore. I'm going to talk about that later on. But I go for Runan's Hurricane, obviously, because Jinx, you know, uh, does a lot of AoE damage. And getting the Runan's Hurricane to spread the damage amongst more people, and, you know, more damage amongst more people, in my opinion, is amazing. Especially because in this meta where there's a lot of team fighting and a lot of times you're hitting front line and you need to spread the damage, I think this is incredibly, incredibly useful. The alternative for this item slot instead of Runan's Hurricane is you could go instead for Rapid Fire Cannon, which uh, basically instead of getting a AoE kind of, um, you know, ability, you're instead getting that one energized attack for poke, which uh, as a third item is really useful because if you get this poke onto a squishy target, this could be like one third of their health or, or something like that. This could be, you know, crucial. Then, of course, because we want to have 100% crit and we want more crit items that is not like LDR, I like to go for Mole Reminder next. You could go for LDR in this slot and then you go for a GA or something else in this slot instead, but I like to go for LDR first. Um, to of course get the armor penetration as well as the grievous wounds also gives you a pretty good amount of AD and for my last item I like going for bloodthirster which is of course going to give me a lot of AD uh, crit as well as of course the physical vamp and the shield now the alternative item for this slot is uh, of course shield bow so where's shield bow I didn't, don't even have it here so shield bow is the alternative item for the last slot now you go for shield bow if there is uh, a lot of bursts in the enemy team for example as I mentioned if there's an enemy assassin like a Rengar or Kha'Zix that can one-shot you before you can react, then you go for Shield Bow. Now, if there are certain assassins that can kill me, but they're not going to one-shot me, for example, an Akali. An Akali, most of the time, is not going to one-shot you unless she's like 10 and 0 or something like that. 
Uh, she's not going to one-shot you because she just take time to execute her combo. Whereas Akazix that jumps on you, uh, like he jumps on you, Q auto, electrocute, can actually one-shot you. Those kind, I will take uh, Shield Ball. But if, you know, it's someone that cannot just instantly one-shot me, I'm going to go for Bloodthirster instead. Because I think Bloodthirster overall is more useful than Shield Ball as a last item. So, for the runes, as I mentioned, I'm going to take Conqueror instead of taking Lethal Tempo, and the reason is I don't really need Lethal Tempo for the attack speed anymore, simply because I already have like uh, uh, what 55% attack speed from here, and I already have 45 attack speed from here. This gives me like 100% extra attack speed, which is more than enough, and going for more attack speed honestly is a waste at this point. So going for a Conqueror to give you more AD and physical vamp, um, not physical vamp, Omni vamp, is going to be way more useful in my opinion. Speaking of physical vamp, of course Hunter Vamp, Prism for physical vamp, Bone Pitting for anti-burst or perseverance if needed, and uh, of course Nimbus Cloak for the additional uh, movement speed. You can also go for uh, other runes. For example, you could go for Mana Flow Band because don't forget that Jinx uh, rockets cost mana. So going for Mana Flow Band actually gives you, um, you know, more, in, a, in, in some sense, more ammo for your rockets, I guess you could say. And for the spells, most of the time I like to take Ghost and Flash because Ghost on Jinx is really useful to number one run away. But number two, when you're in those team fights and you're getting those resets, uh, you know, Ghost will reset together with you as well. So your burst of movement speed from both your passive and your ghost is going to be absolutely huge. And you know, this could win you the fight. Anyways, with all that said, let's of course jump uh, straight into talking about our gameplay. Okay, so now jumping into the Jinx gameplay, of course, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and any questions, queries, or remarks, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and I will, of course, be sure to address them. Another thing is, of course, don't forget to check out Jinx's basic guide that we released right before this video. Of course, that will um, show you guys her skills, leveling, order, tips, and tricks, as well as some of her combos. And we're going to jump straight into the game. So here, of course, we put our usual control ward and we get a couple of free auto attacks. Now here, Jinx wins really, really hard against Samira because of the, the uh, range advantage you have. So you can see here, I'm just in my rocket form. I'm not focusing on the minions. I'm focusing on auto attacking down my enemies. Look at how low <laughs> Seraphine is already. I'm going to, of course, take a little bit of minions, uh, get the attack speed from my minigun, switch over to the rocket form, blast the Samira, blast the... the, the uh, Seraphine and look at this at level one look at Samira and Seraphine's health they're both like almost dead now of course we can't actually kill them under the tower but um, you know they're gonna have a, a, a really miserable laning phase now Samira of course uh, picks up the fruit no issue there we knew that was gonna happen we're going to go back to rocket form we're gonna go back to blasting her minion blocks my my zap unfortunately but here you know, we're once again attacking the minion, pushing them in, you know, blasting them with my rockets whenever I can. Boom, another rocket lands onto Samira. Samira and Seraphine both on 1 HP, and any small mistake made by them will, of course, you know, lead to their death. Here, Samira is trying to back. Of course, we're not going to allow that. We're going to have to put a stop to that. And here, Samira is now really, really low. Unfortunately, Seraphine comes in with the double shield. I popped the ghost there because I thought, you know, I could run up and auto attack her a little bit. Uh, and she would die, but unfortunately the double shield comes in from the Seraphine and uh, you know, she does survive due to that. Now unfortunately here, I'm running out of mana and <laughs> I, did, I don't have mana flow ban in this game. I believe I had uh, Nimbus Cloak this game. Uh, so no mana for me means I'm not going to be able to poke them very well uh, because with minigun you can't really do all that much poking. Now my minigun range is actually still longer than Samira's range. Unfortunately here, uh, Wukong comes in for a gang, I'm forced to flash, and Nami is also forced to flash, and Nami in fact dies, so you can see that despite having honestly a, a pretty amazing laning phase, we of course uh, were very susceptible to the gang because we're so far uh, overextended and uh, you know we're really susceptible to a gang, and my main uh, argument of why we did what we did is obviously because we obviously could have killed them possibly, but also uh, we were trying to make them low enough such that they couldn't go in with the Wukong. Uh, anyways, here I stopped Seraphine's back. Seraphine was stupid enough to try to back, uh, you know, in the bush uh, where I can obviously shoot her. Now, again, I've run out of bullets on my uh, on my rocket. I'm forced to switch to minigun, but either way, we leave her on 1 HP again. Unfortunately, uh, these, uh, this Seraphine and this uh, Samira, uh, you know, they refuse to use Starmoner spells for some reason. It, it's honestly insane. Like, if I were them, I would be scared into using my flash or my heal or what what not like long long ago but you know but they they are just holding on to their summoner spells i don't know what's going on but 
Anyways here, I'm trying to back. Uh, but you can see Wukong firstly interrupts me. Then the wave is pushing in, so no reason for me to back now. I'm under tower, I'm safe. Uh, really hard for Wukong to dive me and Nami. We have the fruit, uh, which you know we do pick up, but we end up taking a lot more poke than you know what we needed to. Wukong uh, has just used his uh, playful trickster, so um, you know, I'm cautious that we could possibly get dive. Once again, I'm trying to back. Uh, Seraphine ulti comes in, I try to dodge it. Um, but doesn't actually come in. Wukong comes in, gets rooted, and just dies under tower. So here I get the reset. I got a full stack conquer. I'm just blasting down the Samira. Unfortunately, uh, my rocket goes straight into uh, the Samira's uh, W, her blade whirl. Jace tries to come in to finish the job on me and Nami, but he ignites the wrong target. Ends up igniting Nami instead of me. Uh, ends up igniting me instead of Nami, sorry. And we both end up living on 1 HP. So here I'm gonna back. I have my uh, BF Sword and Noon Quiver uh, picked up at this point. Couldn't afford the Zeal, so I decided to go for the Noon Quiver instead to get a better uh, component item. So anyways here, uh, we're just gonna head back into the lane. Obviously, uh, we have one kill, which is of course great on, on the Wukong. Uh, but honestly, considering how dominant we were in the early lane, you know, things should have gone better than, better than this. As I said, I thought that you know when they two were low enough, they weren't be able to go in with the Wukong. But you know, Samira went in anyways <laughs> with her with her W. She went in anyways, and you know, Nami ended up dying for it, and uh, both of our flashes ended up getting blown. So that was kind of a really um, unfortunate uh, chain of events. And yeah, but this is a kind of unique Jinx uh, lane because most of the time Jinx cannot bully this hard. Most of the time you have to play relatively safe or at least it's somewhat neutral. But in this game, Jinx actually has the dominant lane. Like Jinx, you know, wins against Samira and against Seraphine is not the worst. Now here Samira goes in onto the onto the, the uh, Nami. Here goes in with the ultimate. Here I'm kiting away from the ultimate. Uh, Nami manages to pick up the kill right before Seraphine manages to CC me and I get the reset. Shen ult comes in to save my life uh, and uh, I am able to finish off the kill onto the Seraphine. So you manage to pick up another kill against them. Here I managed to pick up one plate as well and then I'm gonna rotate over to the dragon fight. So here I'm trying to put the traps down to block Jace from coming here. He ends up flashing and killing the, the uh, Nami, however, uh, you know, I'm in a little bit, little bit of danger with the uh, Wukong and the Jace there, so I'm gonna have to back off and concede the dragon um, over to them. So here I'm going to back. And uh, obviously, not too much I can do, so I'm just gonna back, you know, get back my resources, pick up my zeal, and now I'm, you know, under 500 gold away from completing the Phantom Dancer, and obviously. When you complete the Phantom Dancer, it's a major power spike because with the BF Sword AD and with the Phantom Dancer, uh, you know you're gonna start doing you know some damage. You know because in the early game without items, you're not really doing all that much. And when you you know pick up a couple of items, you're gonna start of course uh, to do damage, and that is gonna of course you know be very very helpful. Here we got the wave in a really really nice spot. So Mira, you guys can see, has to walk up to uh, you know sort of do damage here. But it doesn't really matter, she's not going to get ganked because everybody is obviously going to be at the Herald fight. Uh, here we dodge the Seraphine uh, double E and here we're going back to the same game plan of using our rockets to poke down our enemies. Here you can see I'm just blasting with the rockets. Samira goes straight into the root and uh, you know takes a lot of damage. It's put pretty pretty low. And here I'm trying to target the Samira to try to kill her if I can. I still have my ultimate but she's not low enough for me to just rock it down. Here I hit the zap though and here with the zap damage I am able to launch the ulti past the Seraphine uh, and I am able to pick up the kill onto the Samira. In the meanwhile the Seraphine does hit the charm but Nami is able to finish off the kill on Seraphine. So overall despite a little bit of hiccups uh, I would say at the earlier stages of the game we are able to basically more or less you could say win lane. I came out 3-0-2, um, Nami is 2-2-3, whereas the Seraphine is 0-2, 0-2-1, and, uh, and, and so is the Samira. So overall, despite you know getting ganked by Wukong, getting our summoners blown, you know, we still end up coming out on top at the end of the day. So as mentioned, we're going to pick up our Phantom Dancer and we're also going to pick up some boots. We still have about a thousand gold left, so we're going to pick up instead a Longsword uh, together with a... Uh, a Glove. Now here that was actually a mistake because I forgot that I already have a BF sword. I wanted to build the long sword up into a BF sword, but uh, I forgot that I already had my BF sword, so I ended up wasting 500 gold. Anyways, here I get the cross map snipe onto the 
uh, onto the Samira. Uh, not sure if you guys saw that, but if you did, just replay that by five for uh, by five seconds. And you can see on the map that I saw Samira was low. I basically just launched my ultimate in my in her general direction. And you know when you go for those cross map ultis, it's sort of like a 50-50 on whether you're gonna actually hit the cross map ulti or not. Uh, because obviously, you know, it's you're gonna hit roughly around an area, but sometimes they step a little bit back, sometimes they end up not moving, sometimes they step a little bit forward, and that makes all the difference about whether you hit your ulti or not. So sometimes, you know, you get lucky, sometimes you don't. And in this case, you know, I managed to score a big one with the ulti. Now here I'm gonna hit uh, over to mid. Well, here you can see I missed the ulti on Jace because I thought I thought he would step back, but he stepped forward instead. Either way, Seraphine is uh, caught between the traps and the tower, and I am able to pick up the kill. I hit the zap onto the Jace, followed by a rocket for the double kill. Here with the the Nami behind me, I'm just tanking the tower, and I'm going to kill the Samira for a triple kill, and I'm still relatively healthy uh, at that. Full stack conquer with the minigun blasting down that Samira into next week. And we pick up the huge triple, and off of that we can clear out the minions and go for the tier one tower here as well. Sion is of course in the top lane with the vein, and Seraphine cannot defend the tower by herself, so it's a free one. And here we can back, and hopefully we can complete the IE. There we go, IE completed. And this is where I noticed that oh, I have an additional BF sword in my inventory for some reason. I'm building towards Rune and Hurricane Nyx. So the BS start is later on going to build into uh, either Bloodthirster or Moral Reminder, depending on which one we choose to build first. Anyways here, Wukong overextends a little bit, and here he gets rooted. I'm trying to blast him down. Unfortunately, he lives on 1 HP, and I get smacked into the enemy team by the Jace. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, I end up losing my 7 kill shutdown. Uh, Samira gets a little bit aggressive under tower and ends up trading 1 for 1 with the Nami. Unfortunately though, she did pick up that shutdown onto me here. Uh, for some reason, our shun is going in with the E-Flash 1v2 uh, with no damage dealer beside him. Uh, so he's not really going to do anything aside from donate a couple of uh, Gs to the, into the enemy team pocket, uh, unfortunately. And here, Vayne is the only one left alive and she's just going to be clearing up the wave. Now the next dragon is of course uh, coming up. And I do expect the enemy team to be on it, but um, as you guys can see from Vayne's ward, they only just um, got on it. So unfortunately for us, our jungle, which is the Shen, has only just revived. No ulti. So here I try to steal with my ulti. Doesn't really work out. Um, you know, it, it, again, the ulti steals is also about 50-50. You're gonna time it roughly, and sometimes it does work, sometimes it does not. Here, unfortunately, I get hit uh, from out of nowhere by the Scion ulti, which I was not expecting uh, to come. And because of that, they get a free pick on me. So kind of a really poor sequence of events from me. I end up... Uh, getting knocked to the enemy team, dying, revive, go for a wave, and just end up dying again. That, those are the worst kind of deaths that you basically just end up dying twice in a row. However, the enemy team kind of full commits onto my team under the tier 2. Uh, Nautilus picks up a kill here, picks up another kill onto the Wukong because of his CC. Jace goes in next, CCs the Jace on the tower, Jace dies as well, Nautilus picks up a triple, Seraphine is now tanking the tower, uh, and now the Nautilus is going to finish off the kill on the Seraphine and inexplicably, Nautilus picks up a Quadra kill. And if the Scion didn't actually back there, this could have been, ironically, a Nautilus pentakill. And that's just hilarious about how the enemy team managed to throw the game um, so, so hard. The, and Nautilus went from being a 2-4-2 Nautilus to a 6-4-2 and Nautilus. And he's now uh, just as fat as me after picking up a Quadra kill, which is absolutely insane. Anyways, off of that huge throw by the enemy team, we have a lot of free time now because they're not uh, on the map any longer. Uh, and here I'm going to pick up Raptors, I'm going to start pushing out uh, mid lane. Vayne's pushing out top as you guys can see and Bot is already pushed out. And uh, Baron is of course up on the map, however we can't just you know start the Baron willy nilly. So we're going to of course have to uh, you know do a little bit of setup and you know see if we can find any picks here. We have a fight between Jace and the Vayne. You can, you can see a Scion out coming in here. I'm a little bit cautious not to get hit by the Scion out again. Here a Scion uh, randomly goes AFK. Um, he has uh, a little bit of internet issues or something like that. However, now he's on the chase for me. And here I'm kiting forward. Uh, blasting down the, the Wukong. I do get the reset. I get the double kill. Switching to Minigun to blast the uh, Seraphine who's on her own. And Vayne also ends up picking up a double kill. So off of that, it's a clean ace. I end up walking into the Kruk pit by accident. But we are going to be able to pick up a free Baron. Now 
Now the game's going well for us overall. We just picked a Baron. We have a 5k gold lead. Uh, only uh, sad thing is we don't have any dragons and any team has all of them. However, here I picked up my Rune and Hurricane. On triple item, obviously you're going to be incredibly strong. Double attack speed items uh, plus IE, you know, with the AoE from Rune and Hurricane. Uh, of course, all of all of that is going to make your damage output insane, especially especially in team fights. So here with the Baron, uh, we're of course looking to push out and we're looking to, for a fight as well. Now here no one responds to Midwave for some reason, so here I'm going to have to instead respond to Midwave. And here we should of course use our Baron buff to push out waves. Here I'm pushing mid and my team is sort of semi-pushing uh, bot lane. And we're getting caught by Seraphine but uh, there was completely no follow up so I'm absolutely fine. Using my Gluttonous Greaves to of course heal myself up. Now I got Nami backing me up and I don't really know what my team is doing here. We're not using the Baron buff to push. I'm not sure why no one is going to any other lane to push. And Sion instead is like kind of you know just inting into the tower and uh, trying to secure tier 2 tower off of his passive. Nearly gets it but uh, doesn't end up getting tier 2 tower. So here once again I'm pushing out mid. Uh, once again, I, I don't know why Shen is farming the jungle at this time, but here I'm, I'm trying to be cautious here because we have completely no pressure on the map because no one is pushing any other lane. The whole enemy team can just respond uh, to mid lane and stop us from pushing mid lane. And Baron buff is going to run out fast and we're basically doing nothing with the Baron buff. So the, the best case scenario right now is uh, a random fight breaks out like this and we end up just killing them uh, you know, off of the fight and just pushing after that. Which is kind of what happens here actually. Vayne picks up a double kill. Here we're chasing uh, for the Jace. Um, Shen gets the kill onto the Jace and here we're chasing onto Seraphine. I uh, don't have enough damage to kill Seraphine though but we are able to of course get the resets off of the kills and get the tower kill. And then uh, for that I can switch to my minigun, blast down this tower and finally we are able to at least crack an inhibitor tower. Uh, Sion out comes in again. Here I'm kiting away from him and um, he once again tries to uh, try, try something. I'm not really sure what he's trying to do, but tries to flash away. It doesn't really work. He ends up dying. Zombie form dies too. And here Vayne is uh, soloing the dragon while the rest of us are getting in some pushing. Now here I think Vayne soloing dragon was a pretty good, uh, pretty, pretty good idea because Wukong was in the base and he can't really do anything. So here I'm going to go for this wave, but unfortunately my whole team is back uh, and I don't want to be pushing alone. So after picking up the wave, I am going to bat as well and uh, pick up my stasis which I only have just completed also with the last whisper. I'm going to of course build towards the LDR, uh, not LDR, the moral reminder and then we can of course head back out. The Baron is about to respawn in 40 seconds and here we're gonna get mid lane parody uh, before that happens. We spot Wukong there, uh, of course trying to fake that he's W in which of course we do still have to be cautious. Uh, if that was the real W, so we still have to play safe. Here Nautilus tries to go in on Wukong, um, doesn't really work. And Wukong finally uses his actual W, and so we know he does not have that. Nice uh, freeze by the Seraphine. Seraphine gets ulted by the Nautilus though, manages to ult me into the tower, but uh, Nautilus tanks the tower because of the hook, and, I, and I'm able to kill the Jinx together with the Nautilus, uh, kill the Seraphine together with the Nautilus and here we can pick up the red buff as well. Baron is of course back up and available. I hit the LT onto 2 and I am able to finish off the kill onto the Jace. Pick up the tower, now Wukong it has GA trying to defend this tower but there's not a lot that uh, they can do as a 2 man unit. Uh, here you can see Wukong's clone ends up getting eviscerated. Samira and Wukong trying their best to defend the tower. Here I'm just chasing uh, onto the base and unfortunately Samira is a little bit too far away for me to kill. Uh, Shen goes in with the ulti and here I'm just trying to blast people inside the base. We are able to finally kill off the Samira or rather Shen ends up uh, picking up the kill. Here I managed to blast down and get uh, Wukong's GA uh, but I ran out of mana so I'm just gonna go ahead and end the game here. Uh, unfortunately before I can do that I do end up dying uh, but anyways the game ends either way and we still had an amazing game just a little bit of an int at the end but doesn't really matter to the outcome of the game at least. So I'm going to leave you guys with the stats as usual. Thank you guys so much for watching the video and goodbye.